We have a dead body there. Here at Hospital 6, there's an execution here at the corner. There's a little girl. I don't know if that's her uncle or father. It's terribly sad that this is happening in Juarez. I would rather film some other type of news, but actually this is what's happening here. And we cannot ignore this. Augustine Mesa has one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. He's a cameraman and reporter for Channel 44, covering the drug war in Juarez, Mexico. This is the most dangerous event I've ever had to cover. That's the grenade explosion. On any given day, we don't know if we will be somewhere and lose our life that day. But it's not just the act of covering the violence in Juarez that is so dangerous. More often, it's how you tell the story. Augustine's boss at Channel 44 is news director Edgar Roman. Journalists in Juarez stay alive because of what they don't say. There is no government authority that will keep you safe in this city. In Mexico, when a journalist gets killed, it will never be solved. You report uh, what you can see, what's on the streets, but you don't dig up because you're going to get into trouble. And many journalists in Mexico have gotten into trouble covering the drug war. According to Pedro Torres, the editor at El Diario newspaper in Juarez, at least 50 nationwide have been killed doing it. Three on his staff have been shot in the last two years. This is the place that where Armando used to work. Uh, it's still like he left. He went to take his daughter to school. When they killed him, she saw everything. Uh, she was eight years old when that happened. Armando Rodriguez had been a crime reporter for El Diario for 10 years. It is not known who killed him, but it is believed he was targeted for revealing too much about the inner workings of the drug cartel. On his way to Armando's funeral, another journalist named Jorge Luis got a call on his cell phone. The man on the other end of the line said that Jorge would be the next journalist to die. I am the first journalist uh, uh, with the political asylum in, uh, from Mexico. The government of Chihuahua wanted to kill me because I was very critical with the corruption in the government and uh, specifically in the police. The government is corrupt with the cartels. Yes, they were working for the cartels. The United States government agreed with Jorge's claims that his reporting on the ties between officials in Mexico and the drug cartels put him at grave risk and granted him permanent asylum in the United States. With the help of journalists still in Juarez, he now runs his news website, La Palaca, from a suburban location in El Paso that he asked us not to reveal. Pásame los datos que tengas. ¿Hay muertos o heridos o qué? ¿Me puedes mandar la foto? Simón, Simón. Now that you have asylum here in the United States, are you safe living here in El Paso? No, not really. <laughs> the border is only five minutes it's from only here. The border is only five minutes, and the cartels have ramifications and, and branches here in El Paso. What time did you discover the body? Does this type of event surprise you? Mm -hmm. Back in Juarez, El Diario crime reporter Lucy Carmen Sosa is determined not to be intimidated. She sits next to the empty desk of her slain predecessor and mentor, Armando Rodriguez. Armando, Armando is always at my side. I have my calendar. I mark the most violent days of the year. For example, 24 in one day. It's something he taught me, and I keep doing it. When this happens to your coworkers and friends, you can't forget. Go, go, go. 
It happened at approximately 9 in the morning. They reported at least six shots at the location. Did you see the victim? What age, more or less? Okay. The person's name is Sergio Mendoza Carrillo. He's the former head of the municipal police. No, no, so far we don't have his age. That's all we have so far. Stories involving downed police officers are particularly dangerous to investigate, as very often there turns out to be a link between the department and the drug cartels. He was the director of the police. They named him to replace Juan Antonio Roman, who was executed on the 10th of May. After what happened to Armando, I think there's more commitment to doing our job without fear. Not with fear, it has to be without fear. We, we have to look at every story to see if we can sign the, the story or not. Pedro ran Lucy's story about the murdered police officer's possible link to organized crime, but decided it would be too risky to use her name in the byline. And what kind of responsibility do you feel as the editor as you send these reporters out every day to cover this story? It's a big responsibility, and I, I deal with it. I have to. Without journalists, there are no democracy. And we believe that, yeah, we believe that. Brent and Craig Renault, reporting for The New York Times, Juarez, Mexico.